We don't need reminding that games in the Soulsborne series can be, well, kind of a dick. And smush. Ah! Oh no! I said we don't need reminding. But just occasionally, these games will pull a move so over-the-top dickish, something so sarcastically, ostentatiously mean, that you can't help but laugh about it. Much, much later. Well, let that time be now! Here are the dickest moves by Soulsborne games we now find hilarious, but where mild spoilers for Dark Souls 1 and 3, Bloodborne and Sekiro Shadows die twice. You've been warned. Dark Souls fans, don't miss an opportunity to tell you about the series' haunting beauty. Oh yeah, it does have a kind of haunting oh beauty. Oh my god. And to be fair, while most things in these games are screaming or covered in poisonous hands, or both, the rare moments when the sun pokes through are all the sweeter for it. Precious moments of calm amid the madness. One such moment can be found in Dark Souls 3's Ringed City DLC, at the point where the Ashen One leaves behind the dust and filth of the Dreg Heap and is carried into the golden glow of the Ringed City itself. Studded with gleaming domes and impossible spires, it's hard not to pause and admire the stunning, silent beauty of this once great settlement before taking your first steps into the city. That's right, scenery admiring time is done! Now is the time for being randomly one-shotted from across the map by a platoon of ghost archers. Why? I don't know, presumably because someone at From Software thought it would be hilarious. And to be fair to them on reflection, they're absolutely right. The only drawback is that this gag isn't a one-off. You now have to pick your way through these arrow-flinging poltergoons, your fear turning to confusion, as Dark Souls 3 transforms into a cover-based shooter with all the haunting beauty of a Gears of War game. Your struggles don't end until you fight your way up to, and proceed to wallop, the monstrous Judicator that sat summoning the archers. And even then, the fact that these enemies pop up several times later means that the joke will start to wear pretty thin for anyone slogging their way through this rock-hard DLC. In retrospect though... LOL. I don't know who this Sen character is, but safe to say they have fundamentally misunderstood the point of a fortress, which, as a reminder, is to keep everyone inside safe from what's outside. Sadly though, there's no more dangerous place to be in Dark Souls, or anywhere, than the inside of Sen's fortress. Players start at the bottom of this giant stone hellbox and are tasked with winding their way up to the top via a twisty, turny and sarcastically trap-filled series of rooms and corridors that not even the employees who work in Sen's Fortress are safe from. Jeez, you folks need a union. Snake men of the world unite! Sen's Fortress also has the dubious honour of being the very first time you will encounter one of these. The Mimic is a trap so iconically devious and cruel, you would never dream, never even consider, that the makers of Dark Souls would put something just as bad, if not worse, about five feet away. But they did. Specifically, this lift, which, well, you'll see. That's right, there's an hilarious twist to this lift, one we imagine the From Software mad lads were absolutely creasing up over when they came up with it. The lift takes you to the next floor, then with the exact same smooth motion as a big brother pretending to hand you the TV remote only to snatch it away, it yanks you into a spike trap. It's hilarious! About six months later, when you've finally gotten over having to run all the way back to this spot to collect your souls. 
The way to avoid getting perforated by this killer lift is to notice that the platform you're standing on is splattered with the gore of the last poor chump who kept riding just that second too long. The other way is to just step briskly out onto the next floor when the lift gets there, instead of waiting and getting turned holier than the Pope. In other words, this is Dark Souls taking a welcome break from punishing players for rushing into situations to punish players for not rushing into situations. You can't win, can you? When we talk about timing in these games, we're usually referring to something boring, like dodging or parrying. But what we should be talking about is comic timing, because if you think these games are focusing all their efforts on fluid combat and world building, you're missing a vital ingredient. Take Bloodborne, for instance, which some mistakenly think is chiefly influenced by gothic horror authors like Bram Stoker and H.P. Lovecraft. Whereas in fact, Bloodborne, and indeed the whole Soulsborne series, is actually drawing much more heavily on the comedic artistry of old school comics like Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, or Lucille Ball. See? Laurel and Hardy even showed up. Legends. Bloodborne might not seem at first like a game created by comedy geniuses, but that's only because you might not have made it to the Forbidden Woods area of the game yet. This dank and mouldering forest is populated by unhinged villagers. Villagers who, at one memorable point on your journey, just a ways across a stony little bridge, have rigged a surprise for trespassers, one of gaming's most perfect comedy set pieces. Is it a dick move to put a spiky log trap where it will almost certainly kill the player with no warning? Sure. Funny? Kind of. But what makes it art is what happens the next time when you know the trap is there. of ways to describe Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Hard, difficult, challenging, exigent? But one word you wouldn't use to describe Sekiro is funny. After all, this is a game with a super serious vibe. A violent story, sparingly told, of loyalty and lineage, where even the most bonkers of boss fights will end with a sad line of dialogue in an even sadder horse. Yeesh! But there are things to laugh about in Sekiro, though admittedly not at the time, probably. As anyone who played up to the point where Sekiro must infiltrate Ashina Castle will remember. This section of the game involves typical amounts of stealth and acrobatic daring do, as Sekiro grapples his way across the rooftops. Rooftops which sadly are guarded by equally acrobatic enemies known as Nightjars. These masked weirdos dress up like birds and perch in wait. Their unpredictable movements can easily overwhelm you, but kill them all and you're free to explore. Oh, except for the bird man who kills you from... Uh, space, I guess? In fact, if you know where to look, you can see this absolutely hilarious enemy hanging out on a kite way up in the sky, waiting patiently to do the one thing he's famous for, yelling woo and gliding in to one-shot you at 500 miles per hour. They say find a job you enjoy and you'll never work a day in your life. Of course, in true Soulsborne fashion, the Howling Nightjar is intimidating at first. But once you know he's there and learn to anticipate his moves, dealing with these enemies soon becomes trivial as... That's enough Sekiro for today.
If you think anything good is going to happen in a place called The Depths, then I have some NFTs to sell you because you are clearly very much an optimist. You'd have to be to think anything positive about what might be Dark Souls' gloomiest, certainly stinkiest area, and video gaming's least hygienic food preparation zone. Please tell me you're at least going to wash that butcher knife. Oh. Health inspector's gonna have a field day. Down here in the fetid filth, there's very little to look forward to, unless you especially like dragons that turn themselves inside out, or accidentally falling down a hole so cruelly placed that this list entry was very nearly all about it. But while tumbling into a nest of the worst enemies in the game certainly sucks, there's something else in the depths that can't be beat for pure kick-in-the-teeth arseholery on the game's part. The bit where you find a glowing item, and in your greed, or maybe just relief that finally something nice is about to happen, you head towards it. Surprise! Ceiling slimes are a thing now. Please make a note of it. This trap is so cruel because it totally plays on your relief at having found something appealing in the depths. The placement is also extremely savage, as while you won't know it at this point, there's actually a bonfire checkpoint just around the corner from the death slime, making this one of the most arduous spots to have to slog your way back to. On a happier note, if you do go back to it, the item turns out to be a soul of a nameless soldier, suggesting that even though this unhappy fellow was presumably chewed up by ceiling slime, the slime couldn't destroy his soul. Must be nice. They say the old ones are the best. In Yharnam, of course, they're probably talking about great old ones like Moon Presence or something equally alien and writhing. But when we say old ones, we're referring to Bloodborne's proven track record of classic comedy bits and skits. For instance, consider one of the first traps players will come across in the game. We're talking about the item at the far end of a shadowy room that when you pick it up, Oh, shot by an elderly man in a wheelchair. Classic. But how to build on a comic set piece like that? Well, what's the funniest kind of joke? An NFT! No, sorry, I mean a callback gag. Masters of comedy structure from software are well aware of this. So little surprise that those gurus of giggles cooked up a little something extra for players bold enough to explore the Old Hunters DLC, which due to its enormous difficulty is best approached much, much later in the game. The great terror. The greatest terror of all is reserved for those who, while exploring the hunter's nightmare, fail to realise they've wandered into the exact same building from the start of the game. Or at least underestimate From Software's commitment to comic escalation. You're going to come to life and attack me, aren't you? Why are you ticking? Are you a oh! If you played Dark Souls 1, you already know to be on the lookout for large balls. <laughs> Please, Dark Souls is very serious. The premise of this video is that it isn't. Anyway, back to balls. There are the rolling balls in Sen's Fortress, or who could forget the very first kick in the shins that the game delivers? A deadly ball in the tutorial area that will probably bonk your noodle, even if you know to be looking out for it. In other words, you know about the risk of big balls rolling downhill and flattening you. So by the time you get to Dark Souls 3, no deadly downhill ball is likely to surprise and or terrify you. No sir, you are ball proof. This poses a problem for the makers of Dark Souls 3 who prefer you to be surprised and or terrified and ball vulnerable. But lo, a solution to their problem and a huge dick move aimed at you, the player. We're talking about the bit in Dark Souls 3's Catacombs of Carthus. Where, having fought your way past several groups of glowy-eyed, hard-as-nail skeletons, you emerge onto this eerily empty stone staircase, where seasoned Souls players will not be at all surprised to be randomly killed by a hitherto unseen rolling ball of densely packed skeletons. So far, so Dark Souls. 
What might surprise you though is what happens the next time, when of course you get out the way of the skeleton ball, only to find, in defiance of both your expectations and the laws of physics, the skeleton ball somehow comes right back again. Kudos to From Software for perhaps the weirdest and most surprising jerk move on this list. A ball of living bones that rolls endlessly up and downhill, giving itself ample opportunity to run you over. You're lucky that a ball of skeletons is inherently funny and that we will definitely laugh about this later, you cruel tricksters. Amping up the extreme weirdness, the skeleton ball is actually controlled by this capering skeleton wearing a jaunty hat for some reason who won't attack you, but scampers away. And if you kill him, the big ball of skeletons breaks apart. There's another staircase riding skeleton ball a bit further on, with a corresponding hat skeleton. And if you kill him, the ball will again break, revealing what was inside, which in this case is an item. And uh, a crab. I think we should end the video now. So those are seven dickest things that the Soulsborne series has done to us, but we would love to hear your suggestions because we, we didn't even touch upon Demon Souls or Dark Souls 2. We know that there's going to be loads of them. So let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, you know, reliving some painful memories as a Dark Souls uh, Soulsborne player, uh, you know, hit that like button. You know, we can all come together in our pain. Let, um, the, healing begin. let the healing begin. And why not subscribe? Because we do a lot of souls y content on this channel because we're mildly obsessed with it. So uh, do that and we will see you next time. Bye!